morning everybody what do you guys know because that's what I'll be talking about today in this audio number 91 because it's been brought to my attention that portals is mentioned in a lot of places you'll find it in my insights books in about five chapters in the book Enoch or Enoch insights you'll find it also in my new book out the bottom spit 2 and you also find it in Estus Insights. And what on earth is CERN doing? You can see many videos on CERN and it's very questionable what those guys are up to. Many say they're trying to open portals to the dimensions. God help us with what they might drag through those portals. And there are many examples of portals showing up if you study the military, if you study the Russian Special Forces and the American Special Forces, they will tell you that they've had encounters with portals and having to fight giants and things like that. Very dangerous creatures. Well, you'll find that also in my Insights books and also especially in my two paranormal books, Out of the Bottom's Pit 1 and 2. But I'm going to give you an example here today I think it's very, very important that people get away from the traditional way of looking at things when it comes to science and how religion keeps everybody in a box. So they really don't really know what's going on, on this planet at all, don't have a clue. They're not told anything. And that's by design. Because the powers that be, and I'm talking about the powers who wrestle against the spirit, Satan and his ilk, they try to keep mankind in as much ignorance as possible while they go around doing all their dirty works. That's how it really is, and it's true. What the scriptures say is completely true. All my books do is to, like the paranormal books, bring out a lot of the truth of what's going on around us, good and bad. And such is the case with this topic of portals. So, without further ado, this is from the Book of Enoch, chapter 33. And this is, I'm reading here from my own book, Enoch Insights, my first Insights book, chapter 33, with the comments. Verse 1. And from thence I went to the ends of the earth, and I saw their great beasts, and each differed from the other. And I saw birds also differing in appearance and beauty and voice, one differing from the other. Comment. Enoch saw many different types of very large beasts at the ends of the earth. Comment 2. According to both the famous and highly decorated Admiral Byrd of the USA, who flew inside the earth on several occasions, 1926, 1947, 1956, he mentioned the exact things that we have read in this book. 1. Circular polar entrances of both the North and South Poles. 2. High mountains, three, lots of forests, four, deep ravines, five, rivers and waterfalls, six, huge creatures such as the mammoths and other monsters, probably like the dinosaurs and the dragons, that sort of thing, roaming around far below his aircraft. These are documented facts that you can look up. Admiral Byrd was the most decorated admiral in the United States in history. And he's the guy who talked about these things. And to the end of the, in the east of these beasts, I saw the ends of the earth when the heaven rests and the portals of heaven open. What was that talking about? Comment three, ends of the earth where the portals are open. It would seem to suggest that the ends of the earth, there are some kinds of portals, which by definition would suggest that sometimes they could be open, other times it could be closed. And these portals sound similar the Bermuda Triangles, known on the Earth in modern times. Oh yes, there's no, not just one Bermuda Triangle like this south of, of Florida and Bahama, Bahamas. No, there are 12 of the poles and 10 around the planet, 5 in the northern hemisphere, 5 in the southern. They're all on the same latitude. I think something like 33 degrees, something of that order. 
And that's what we know about the Bermuda Triangles. There's not just one of them, but there are 12 of them. I'm saying that now. I didn't say that in the book. I should have done. But this was my first book written in 2018. So the ends of the earth where the portals are open. It would seem to suggest that at the ends of the earth there are some kind of portals. Which by definition would suggest sometimes they'd be open, sometimes they're closed. Another way of putting that in modern terms is sometimes they're cloaked like what's called the northern entrance, or some people think it's the North Pole, but it's not really there. Sometimes it's cloaked, sometimes you can see it, sometimes you can't. Which tends to also suggest dimensional shift, time shift, that sort of thing, which Einstein talked about. Einstein said there would be places on the planet where one dimension would overlap with another. And if you went to those places, you might just disappear. Well, that's what the Bermuda Triangle is all about, disappearances of ships and planes, even satellites and, and people. I was just um, listening just yesterday to a video on the Bermuda Triangle. I've seen many. That one was quite good, documentary. Most of the time, I try to explain it away, but man can't explain away things like the Bermuda Triangle because you can try and say, it's, oh, it says extreme weather they have down there, sudden hurricanes and um, water spouts and um, sudden giant waves. You can maybe explain some of the instances of disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle, but there's a lot you cannot explain. But I won't go into that. That's another big topic in itself. I will go into that soon on the Bermuda Triangle. But it is related to portals. That's why I just mentioned it a little bit. Anyway. These portals sound similar to the Bermuda Triangles known on Earth in modern times. Areas on the Earth where ships, planes, submarines, even satellites high up in the atmosphere have vanished into thin air without trace. Under very, very special circumstances and exact locations on the planet. Some scientists have stated the disappearance of both people and ships and aircraft happens in areas where there are portals to other dimensions or some kind of overlap in both time and space. The above mentioned portal is most probably talking about either the northern or southern circular polar entrances to inner earth. These entrances at the ends of the earth are not small and are stated to be around 1200 miles in diameter when open. There seem to be dimensional gates that sometimes allow people and ships or planes to enter. On other occasions, people traveling near the same area wouldn't even notice the entrances as they're closed or cloaked. Why was Admiral Byrd allowed inside the earth? He himself stated he was permitted by those who live inside the earth. There are many more details which you can read in my apocryphal book, Out the Bottom's Pit. Well... So anyway, that's taken from chapter 33. And now I'm going to go on, skip a little bit here, go to chapter 34, verse 1. And from thence I went towards the north, to the ends of the earth. There saw a great and glorious device, the ends of the whole earth. Comment 1, great and glorious device at the ends of the whole earth. This is a strange expression to use, and we normally think of a device as something mechanical. It would be good to see what the original word was used by Enoch in Hebrew, as it is possible the translation used this word device, because they couldn't think of a more appropriate word to use. I'm convinced that this great and glorious device at the ends of the earth is probably talking about the great northern aperture, which descends into the inner earth, where the North Pole is supposed to be, but isn't. Here are some very interesting and that is confirmed by all the explorers that have been there. They said there is no pole. All of them say that. But they descended or came to a much warmer place. How is that possible? They missed the ice. But that's what they all say. Here are some very interesting verses in the book of Job. That's, of course, before they were shut up by the governments of this world. And Satan it doesn't want people to know the earth's hollow. It doesn't want them to know about these portals and entrances to the inner world. It's just basically how God created things in the first place. No big deal. He just didn't make the earth solid, as science tells us. It's just nonsense. And you can prove it many, many ways, with many experiments. 
I'm convinced that this great and glorious device at the ends of the earth is probably talking about the great northern aperture, which descends into the inner earth, where the North Pole is supposed to be, but isn't. The following verses from the book of Job are a perfect description of the northern opening in the hollow earth, right, so from the Bible. Job 26, 7. He stretches out the north over the empty place and hangs the earth upon nothing. Comment 2. This sounds like the big hole at the north pole of the earth is being described. Or look at this description. This is like 2nd Estrus. Job 33, 8. Who oh, shut up the sea with doors when it breaks forth as if it had issued out of the womb. The womb is hollow. Comment 3. Apertures, doors, at the north and south poles, so called, with the seas going through these apertures, thus the appearance as if the seas had issued out of the womb. As mentioned before, these doors are also dimensional gates, which are sometimes open, sometimes closed. Job 38.30. The waters are hid as with a stone. The face of the deep is frozen. Comment 4. Talking again about the so-called north and south poles of the earth. According to those who have travelled inside the earth through the northern opening, there is a great and high barrier of ice inside the round aperture, which blocks progress of further travelling, at least by ship. And thus the description. The waters are hid as with a stone. The face of the deep is frozen. Job 38.13 that it might take hold of the ends of the earth, and that the wicked might be shaken out of it. Job 38.17 Have the gates of death been opened unto thee, or hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? Comment 5 Apparently there are a lot of both wicked people, giants, monsters, living inside the inner earth surface, who will be judged when God arises to judge the earth. The inner earth, which was originally an incredibly beautiful place, and in pristine condition at the time of the Garden of Eden, has unfortunately in modern times become a hornet's nest of all kinds of unsavory critters, both physical and spiritual, and none of them recognize Jesus as a savior, but rather they worship the god of the underworld, Satan, often called the ascendant master by oriental religions. Revelation 11:18, And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that it should be judged, and thou shouldst give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and unto the saints, and to them that fear thy name, both small and great, and should destroy them which destroy the earth. Comment 6. It's clear to see that there is a link between higher and lower dimensions, such as Hades, Hell, Tartarus, Lake of Fire, which could be classified as lower dimensions, and the refuge of paradise, higher dimension, noticed being inside the earth by Jesus and called the bosom Abraham and also the physical inner earth, where, where apparently there are physical beings, all types living, including humans, giants, dragons, dinosaurs, a whole lot more. God obviously took Enoch on an amazing tour of the inner earth, and even as far as a northern portal, from which he then returned to the outer surface of the earth? Question mark. When Enoch is describing the falling portals of heaven, the question to be asked is, was he describing the heavenly portals from the vantage point of the inner earth or the outer earth? Did Enoch himself live on the inside of the earth, as well as all the other inhabitants of earth prior to the Great Flood? Did mankind start living on the outer surface of the earth after the Great Flood now? I'll explain more about these points in detail. And here I saw three portals of heaven open in heaven. Through each of them proceed north winds. When they blow, there is cold, hail, frost, snow, dew, and rain. And out of one portal they blow for good, but when they blow through the other two portals, it's with violence and affliction on the earth. They blow with violence. Comment 7. This is also quite an odd expression. Through one portal the winds blow for good, and through the other two portals for violence and affliction. This verse would seem to indicate that these particular portals are much more than just physical portals as they cause violence and affliction upon the earth. It reminds of the spiritual forces which afflict our world today. The four horsemen of the apocalypse. Revelation chapter 6. I'll just mention here, ladies and gentlemen, I'm convinced the four horsemen are riding. Just look at the conditions of the world today. Just look what's going on around you. Four horsemen here. Horsemen of death, the war, destruction, famine, and hell, of course. Revelation 6, 8. And I look and uphold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, 
hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger, and with death and with the beasts of the earth. And that's the end of chapter 34. As you can see, quite a lot of information in it. Chapter 35. This only has, strangely, one verse in the book, you know. And from thence I went towards the west, to the ends of the earth, saw three portals of the heaven, opened such as I have seen the east, same number of portals, same number of outlets. Here's that one. And here's, finally, here's chapter 36. And from thence I went north, I went towards the south, to the ends of the earth, and I saw there three portals open in the heaven, and thence came down rain and wind. From thence I went to the east of the heavens, and saw there three eastern portals of heaven open, and small portals above them. And through each of these small portals passed the stars of heaven, run their course to the west on the path which has shown them. And as often as I saw, I blessed always the Lord of glory, and I continue to bless the Lord of glory, who has wrought great and glorious wonders to show the greatness of his works to the angels and spirits and to men, might praise his work and all his creation, and might see the work of his might and praise the great works of his hands and bless him forever. Well, there's a lot more in this chapter. I won't read any more on that, because I just want to finally show you one verse here from my other book, Esdras Insights, or Second Esdras. Incredible verse. Just incredible, incredible, incredible. How these guys could describe these things so well back then, so long ago. Ezra 2,500 years ago, and Enoch 5,000 years ago. Now, this is the last verse I'll read today. I think you'll find this interesting. So this is chapter 6 from Second Esdras, verse 1. And he said unto me, there's an angel here talking to the prophet Ezra. And he said unto me, at the beginning of the circle of the earth. Look, they knew the earth was round thousands of years ago. It wasn't Columbus who discovered the earth was round. You can find it in the Bible long ago and in the pocket books. And he said unto me, at the beginning of the circle of the earth, before the portals of the world were in place, and before the assembled winds blew, before the rumblings of the thunder sounded, before the flashings of lightning shone, before the foundations of paradise were laid, before the beautiful flowers were seen, and before the powers of movement were established, and before the innumerable hosts of angels were gathered together, before the heights of the air were lifted up, and before the measures of the firmaments were named, before the footstool of Zion was established, before the present years were reckoned, before the imaginations of those who now sin were estranged, before those who stored up treasures of faith were sealed. I was talking about the sealing of 144,000, 500 years before we knew about it. The only time we heard about it was the book of Revelation, but it's written there, Second Esther, 500 years earlier. Fascinating book, Second Esther, along with the book Enoch. So I pray that you will find that interesting. And like I said, I'm working on a new edition of Esther's Insights. My first book was very small. Because this book, Second Ezra, only has two chapters in it. I'm working on a new book, new edition, that's got both First and Second Ezra in it, plus a lot more information. And the new book will be more than twice the size of this first edition. So, and it will also have a brand new cover done by, by my daughter Susanna, which should be something incredible, showing the hollow earth or showing the portals. But that will come out in a few months' time, God willing. In the meantime, I encourage everybody, please do get my latest book, Out of the Botanist Pit 2, which covers these topics, portals, Bermuda Triangles, and very strange odd things going on on this planet, things like the Philadelphia Experiment, that I cover more in my first paranormal book, Out of the Botanist Pit 1. explains it in great detail. And actually, I've discovered a lot more since then. I'm going to talk about it on a program I'll be interviewed next week. I'll be talking about Bermuda Triangles and a Philadelphia experiment in detail because I found out a lot more information that's very interesting. But that'll be next week when I get interviewed by Chris about the Philadelphia experiment, uh, the paranormal, and the Bermuda Triangles, especially those topics. But I'd like to encourage everybody to please do get my books, my insights books, of which there are now seven, 
And on these topics, Asdus Insights, Enoch Insights, and Out of the Bottom Spirit 1 and 2 cover what I've been talking about today. But this is, I'm just touching on it here, just a tiny little bit. There's so much more to talk about. Okay. Bye for now. Have a great day.